different this time. I'm not going to talk about the same things, and yet I am going to talk about the same thing. And in case you're curious, I'm going to label this to the work. To the work. And I will be reading from my version, which is King James, and I am not too picky about what version Joel decides to put on the screen. Sometimes getting to read it from a different version is, is good. <clears throat> so, with the events of today and us trying to do God's business, which without God's guidance would be fruitless, right? We'd just be accomplishing man's stuff, and we don't want to do that. So I thought we could talk about that, how we do that work. So to the work today. So today, let's talk about works, faith, and grace. Now, we all know that works can't save us. Only the grace of God can save us. We can't save ourselves. I think every human being over about the age of five knows that. We don't have that power. We cannot save ourselves. So it follows that our works can't save us. We're going to die anyway. And that would be the end if someone with more power than us doesn't intervene. So we really want God to grant us his grace, right? Yeah, we do. Can we affect how God thinks about us? Hmm. Can our children affect how we think about them? Uh, they do every day, don't they? Obviously. We can be disgusted with our children, or we can love them so dearly that we just melt, right? Both things happen. Do you suppose God responds similarly? I believe that there is a comparison, yes. How is it that Abraham was called the friend of God? So Abraham chose his friend, and God understood that. God responded by calling Abraham his friend. How is it that David is called a man after God's own heart? So our choices definitely affect God, absolutely, positively. And we always need to be aware of that. And our choices are one of our major works, aren't they? Now, work is not play. That's why you get paid for it. Just a basic concept about work. Work is not play, because if it was play, you'd have to pay somebody else to work so you could play. That other person's work would be what? Building a bicycle, an airplane, a motorcycle, or a vacation home. But somebody else works so you can play. So your work is for some result also, but you get paid for it because it's not necessarily what you choose. It takes effort. <clears throat> so the ideal would be to get a job or get to work at what you really want to do, right? So then is work play? Well, airline pilots, pro sports players, musicians, gaming programmers, those all come to mind. Louis Armstrong, I read something about him, practiced every day from the time he was eight, if I remember the age correctly. Every day, weekday, weekend, vacation day, holidays, sick days. He, vac he worked and practiced every single day. He never took a day off. That was his own testimony. And he often didn't want to. You know, playing that repeatedly. Tell me, musicians, is it always something you really want to do if you've already practiced a song a hundred times? You want to do it again and again and again? I'm not sure. I'm not a musician. I don't know how to answer that. But, you know, airline pilots have the same problem. They practice and train and practice and train. And after you do that a while, all of a sudden, it's not fun anymore. And airline pilots, sometimes they sweat blood. Don't tell me that's not work. 
<clears throat> so, what about pro sports players? It's all fun and games until there's injuries, right? Or until the coach or manager disagrees with you and says, no, you need to do it this way. Fun factor goes away really quick. <clears throat> That's why it's called work. That's why some of them only last for a short while and others buckle down. You know, Michael Jordan had personal coaches all through his career. You ever wonder why he got better and better and better, even though his physical prowess was getting worse and worse, but yet toward the end of his career, he was still doing great. Because he practiced and he listened to his coaches and his personal coaches. He reviewed his errors and improved himself. It was work. <clears throat> I know a couple of motorcycle racers, really, truly. Actually, I know more than a couple, but I know a couple that had unbelievable natural talent. Really, really good. One of them raced for a year and a half, never lost a race. True story. I'll tell you names afterwards if you're interested. Never lost a race until he had a really bad crash and broke himself up really bad. And he never went back to it. He's a truck driver now. So, when it became work and the fun factor went away, he gave up. I mean, he healed from his injuries. He could have gone back, but he didn't. He quit. <clears throat> so that's interesting when it becomes work, isn't it? You have to decide that it's worth it. How do you make it worth it? Passion. How about us? Do we make preaching the gospel our passion? Because there are difficult times, aren't there? There are times when it's not so easy when you, well, what do I say? Should I say anything or should I just let it slide? And I'm, I don't have an answer for all those times, do I? Nobody does. So do we make preaching the gospel our passion or is it just another aspect of our many faceted lives? I'm stepping on my own toes also, just so you know. Sometimes I don't feel like I always make the right choice. Hmm. So what about our vocation? Is it work or play? Do we just do it when it feels good? What about when it's not comfortable? What about when your family or friends disown you or just simply are displeased with you? Or when your own brethren call you out? Do you buckle down and pray and study more? Or do you weaken, get negative, fall apart mentally, <clears throat> or pacify those who are making you uncomfortable? How do we stay strong? Because everybody needs to stay strong, right? Sometimes you have to pick up. So here's a verse that my Uncle Vaughn gave me first decades and decades ago. Proverbs 16.3. How do you stay strong? Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. That's not necessarily difficult to understand, is it? Just do what is right. Is this the promise that your thoughts will get right? I mean, look at that verse. Commit your works unto the Lord. In other words, just do it, and your thoughts shall be established. Is that a promise? How many have tried this? I don't want to see your hands. I bet we all have. All right? We've all said, okay, I'm going to do it right anyway. We've all tried it. Did it help? I'm saying yes. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, it helped me too. It's called practicing godliness. It's not being a hypocrite to do what's right when you don't want to. That's called practicing godliness. It's a growth step, isn't it? And the more you do it, the easier it becomes, but you never completely get over it. That is, not wanting to do it the wrong way or not be out there preaching the gospel in some way, even if it's just by example. Matthew 26, 41. We're talking about us here today, not, not necessarily <clears throat> 
how to vote, how to decide today. But us, Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah, we have problems. We, we sometimes think to do the right things, but, you know, it's kind of tough. Man, that's hard. That's work. And I'm just not in the mood. Paul had those problems. Romans 7, starting at verse 15. Romans 7, 15. Paul the apostle, who had great gifts, he could heal, speak in tongues. He, he just, he was there, and he always had the right thing to say. But sometimes his life wasn't so easy. He had to correct other apostles. He had to line things out, and that, that's kind of the thing we're talking about, isn't it? Let's read what Paul said here in Romans 7. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Yeah. He's got problems going on with his thinking. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. In other words, if he does it the right way, he's consenting to the law, and that's the right thing to do. That's good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. If we depend on our natural man, it's not going to go good. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. So if you let your natural man rule you, you're not going to find the right answer. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Are we different? Paul acknowledged that even he could fail in 1 Corinthians 9, right? But he also said he'd fought a good fight. So you can overcome this. Paul overcame it. We can win. Hebrews 11 is a very small list of an innumerable number of people who overcome. And there is no reason in the world we can't work and make that choice and have that result as well to become loved children of God. Revelation 5.9 says something about out of every nation and kindred and tongue. Yeah, awesome. Now, you may have heard this before. Romans 12, starting at verse 1. But I, it, it remains ever true and ever a good passage. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God... By the mercies of God. Is, is he getting help here? I think maybe he is. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. In other words, not a dead sacrifice. Right now, while you're living. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable, not unreasonable. He's not asking too much. Buck up. Do the right thing and your brain will come around eventually. <laughs> And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, while I believe in positive thinking, let's also read the next verse. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, with God's help, we can accomplish success. If we just depend on ourselves, it's going to be tough. Okay, now I want to hit a point that always strikes with me. Acts 17, 11. It's a verse, again, you've probably heard this one before. These, or those in Berea, were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures once a week whether those things were so. 
I made sort of a pun there, didn't I? Not very funny, actually. Daily. Daily. So I'm going to apply that back to Proverbs 16. Do that which is right, and your thoughts will be brought around daily. They search the scriptures daily, not just on Sunday. This helps me a lot when I do it. Confession, I don't always do it. Extra confession, when I do it, man, I feel a lot better. Works better, my brain works better. And I look at you all and in the mirror with a better attitude. <laughs> That's worth a lot. It just is. So, with following this thought, Luke 9, 23. Luke 9, 23 which says, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross well, in the last week of his life. No, daily. How often do we have to think about this? And follow me. What does it mean to deny yourself? Come on, let's be honest. It means allowing yourself to do what you want to do. You're a natural man. That's what not denying yourself means. Make sure I don't do too many double negatives here. Denying yourself means limiting that natural man. Not allowing yourself to do what you want to do. Okay, so examples, you know, like get vengeance, get even. To get the last word, oh man, I don't think I'm the only one who wants to do that. To be the most important in the room, to get more money, more power, etc. Isn't this kind of Romans 7, Paul's internal argument that he had with himself? Yeah. yeah. Deny yourself daily. Follow. One more. Hebrews 3.13. Hebrews 3.13. But exhort one another, am I stuck on this? Yes, I am. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears> hmm. <throat> the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceiving because when you're doing it, you don't think you're sinning. At least you don't want to. And if you don't look in the mirror with very clear, clean glasses, you're not going to admit you're doing sin. So you have to really clean that up. And part of that is exhorting one another daily. Now, obviously, that means starting with me. I need to exhort myself through the clean glasses and the mirror of the scriptures, right? So, we've talked about this before. We've talked about exhorting, provoking, edifying, helping each other. But maybe if we did it daily, exhorting, it would be easier? Or would it? Well, that's what it says. It wouldn't be wrong to exhort one another daily. <clears throat> Sometimes I think I can't take it anymore. I've heard that. But that's an opportunity for me to improve. My work then should be to respond correctly. And that would be a work, wouldn't it? Because we don't, our natural man doesn't want to respond correctly. In other words, add love to whatever exhorting I may be receiving or giving. Definitely add love. In other words, again, we don't dare to be offended. Because that other person is commanded to exhort me, edify me, build me up, correct if necessary. Ouch. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we don't dare be offended, but take it like a mature person. 
Now, if the exhortation is inappropriate, if you're being corrected for something that you're not guilty of, how dare us to judge that it was not done in love? So you still have to make sure that your work is correct. We can't read minds. So our work here is to assume that they're doing it with the right mindset. And that will help a lot. If they're in error, okay, there's time. It doesn't have to be necessarily settled right now, especially if there's love. You, know, you, can, you can work on things in a loving way. That doesn't mean we can't ask questions, but it does mean not to turn it into a quarrel. So today, if, is, today is one of those daily days, right? It is. So let's expect to exhort and be exhorted. And let's give it and receive it in love. Just because we disagree doesn't mean I can or should think I'm better than you. Something about loving your neighbor in there, I think. And if that doesn't come easily or automatically to throw love into that mixture, then you have to have faith, work on it. Growth is okay. So is everything of this cosmos bad? No, obviously not. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 7. Ecclesiastes 9, 7. <clears throat> says, go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. For God now accepteth thy works. Let thy garments be always white, and thy head lack no ointment. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity. Yeah, there's vanity in it, but enjoy it, which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life and in the labor which thou takest under the sun. Whatever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. If you're going to do something, do it right. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Isn't there a verse that says the night is coming when no man can work? Does that apply to a point in time, or does that apply to each individual? We can't do it anymore. My point is there is, we're here today. We can work, and so we need to do it with all our might and do it in the right way. <clears throat> so we get to do God's work today. We get to. It's a blessing. Be passionate. Now, I'm not trying to use psychology or the power of positive thinking, but if your treasure is in God's promises, then it's in the work we do for God as well. Are we making points with God? Sure. But we can lose points too by having the wrong attitude, can't we? <clears throat> First Corinthians nine sixteen. Which says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. Yeah, that, that's the gospel message. That comes from God. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. I'd like to read that from the ISV as well. Joel doesn't have to go there unless he wants to. <clears throat> Don't mean to double his work. But in the ISV, if you want to read along in the King James there, for if I preach voluntarily, I get a reward. But if I am unwilling to do it, I am still entrusted with that obligation. Whoa. So, you know, I guess the reward might be a little different, but the obligation is the same to preach the gospel. <clears throat> However, that works out. Another interesting verse, Proverbs 24, 27. 24, 27. Which, 
Proverbs 24, 27. Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thine house. I remember when I was first shown this verse, I understood some important factors about priorities that I didn't always have prioritized right. And maybe I still don't. <clears throat> but I, I understood important factors about priorities, sacrifices, how to get ahead in this life. And interestingly enough, if you read books on how to get ahead in this life by typically richer people who have succeeded, this one verse sometimes covers their whole book. It, really. Not that I've read all of them. I haven't. I haven't even read a complete one. But I've read pieces of several highlights and, and more. <clears throat> it's good advice. <laughs> Thank you. That helps. <clears throat> it's good advice. <sighs> but now I'm wondering if it doesn't mean to work in this life and you'll be blessed in the next. Work in the field and then your house will be established. Hmm. Or maybe it could be a type of how one can handle their spiritual growth. First things first. Don't know. I'm not going to go too far with that, but I think there's a lot there in Proverbs 24, 27 that makes very, very good sense. Philippians 2, 12. Okay, I'm going to pick on us or me now. Philippians 2, 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And then here's the verse that steps on my toes. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Does that mean you can't disagree? No, but it means you aren't going to quarrel about it. You're not going to turn it into an unnecessary fight. Consider the data and go with whatever the truth shows, right? And don't murmur. Hear what they did. How can you think that? That's silly. No, 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 no. You, know, you can't do that. You just, okay, hey, well, what about... <clears throat> Ultimately, let's look at Galatians 6, 4. Galatians 6, 4. <sighs> Which says, but let every man prove his own work. I keep coming back to this single little word, don't I? And then he shall have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. I want to throw the word love in there. How do you tell the difference? Well, I think that's how. If you're loving the other person, it becomes spiritual. I mean, that's a general use of the word spiritual. But if it's just to win an argument, then it's fleshly. <clears throat> For, you know, why would you want to lead in the church? Is it for 
your personal position or is it for spiritual growth for all? Verse 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Keep doing the right thing. Yeah, you constantly have to keep this brain corralled, right? Paul talked about that, and he had the Spirit of God, and he still had to constantly keep his brain corralled. Don't be depressed because that happens. It's going to happen. <clears throat> Just don't be weary. Don't get distressed about it. And verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Yes. 1 Thessalonians 5.12. 1 Thessalonians 5.12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Yeah, those two have to go together, don't they? And be at peace among yourselves. Okay, amen. I like that. The older I get, the more I like it. When I was young, I didn't consider this as valuable as I do today. <laughs> Hopefully I've grown a little. Ephesians 2, 8. Ephesians 2, 8. We kind of talked about this at the beginning, but it's totally always on the table. For by grace are you saved through faith, in other words, God requires that your faith get to him, and then he'll save you through that faith. <clears throat> and that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Whoa, wait, i just been talking about works. Did we change the story? No. No, not at all. Now just keep reading. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, this is always God's plan, he's ordered this, that we should walk in them, in the good works. Yes, it's only God's grace that saves us, but it's like the parent-child relationship. You might put one in the will and you might leave one out. And that's your choice. And what do you use to judge that by? Well, obviously it's how they handle what you've taught them. How much of a friend they've decided to be to you. And you have a lot of sway on that, but every man decides for themselves. So works, faith, grace, right? First Peter 1 Peter 1.17 And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work. Something we can't do, but yet we do discern. We're going to do that today, aren't we? We're going to discern. How is the works? I, I, I had a very close friend who came to me decades ago and suggest that we vote in a certain person. Why? So that they would become a better person, so they would grow and their works would improve. That's not the way it works, is it? You recognize the fact that they're already doing the works, loving their brethren and doing what they should be doing. That's how that works. Like Mike said well this morning, it's it's an effort that you recognize, but you don't have to be there. And if you're going to do it just so you'll do more work, I get the feeling that might not work. <clears throat> Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Yeah. But we're judged according to our own works. 
course, I cannot go through this subject without hitting James at least a little bit. I mean, you can get awesome verses out of the book of James in every single chapter. I'll narrow it down just to James 2, 23 and 24, I think. Which says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. So we see that belief is a work. But Abraham did more than just believe. He did. He worked. Whatever God asked, without necessarily understanding, I think he eventually understood everything. But when he was first told to get out of here, you're going someplace, I'm not even going to tell you where. He just did it. Do we have that kind of faith? Wow. <clears throat> Verse 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Of course, there's a concept of grace following that, isn't there? Only God can save you. We'll finish up with Revelation 22.12. Revelation 22.12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Let's work the works of the Lord today and daily, every day. In my case, I have to look in the mirror often and have the scriptures right there and keep comparing, making sure that my thoughts are always brought into the obedience to Christ. Thank you. Let's have a song.